Riverpoint have sent me their latest 3D scanner to test out. This is the Trackit 3D scanner, and this represents a really cool advancement in comparison to any of the 3D scanners that I've used before. So this is a handheld 3D scanner. This is the handheld element, as you can see. And the primary difference with this and any scanners that I've used before is that this also has a tracking head, which you can see behind me there. Now, the massive benefit to that is that this tracking head locates in kind of free space the position of the handheld element that you're using here. So any scanner that I've used before has just located its position based on the part that you're scanning. That does that, but then it's also positioned by the head, which allows you to do really fast scanning of small parts and larger parts as well, and it's really super accurate. It also means that we don't need to use any markers when scanning because the tracking head knows the location of the handheld element at all times and that makes things much, much easier and quicker to do. Because of the nature of the type of scan that this is able to perform, we can also scan various different surfaces like um, light and dark things, shiny surfaces without the need for scanning spray. And that is again, a massive improvement from anything that I've used before. So in this video, I'm going to be 3D scanning this supercharger here. This is going to go on my boat a little bit further on down the line and having a 3D scanner that is going to allow me to place that alongside the 3D model that I've already got of the engine for my boat. And it's going to allow me to position that, design brackets to get it fixed in the correct place. I'm also going to 3D scan the inlet manifold, which will go in place of what I've currently got. That's also going to allow me to design the intake transfer that goes between the two and position everything, make sure that we've got all good clearances. And uh, this is going to hopefully showcase a really good example of what we can use 3D scanning for and also how awesome this bit of kit is. So um, let's get this set up and I'll show you how to calibrate it and how to get underway with a 3D scan. So the thing that you notice immediately is the military grade cases that this scanner comes in. This is incredibly well protected with these uh, really heavy duty plastic cases that unclip and they got masses of pre-molded foam on the inside of them. So this is a really nice thing to see. It immediately gives you a good impression of the quality of this scanner and the way that it's protected for use. A lot of the time I'm going to be 3D scanning out in the field and on site and um, this just means that I know it's going to be looked after. So we've got one case for the handheld element and one case for the tracking head. There were various different things involved with the calibration of this scanner. Now, there's quite an involved calibration process, but it's actually um, really simple to work through. The software guides you through everything that you need to know in order to get things set up. So you've got these two gimbals that control the calibration pole, which you can see me setting up here, and also the tracking head as well. The two of those move around in various different tasks throughout the calibration process that we'll see in operation in just a minute. So you get those set up on a tripod and the tracking head lives on the largest one of those. You can then connect all the USBs and the really nice thing with this is that the USB connections screw in with these little locking pins, which is brilliant for when you're moving things around, especially in a workshop environment, you don't want those fragile cables being pulled out. You can then start the calibration process and as I mentioned, there's a number of different functions that involve moving things around, scanning um, different parts of the calibration plate. So we start out primarily with uh, just an accuracy check and then we do a calibration process between the tracking head and this calibration pole. And as you can see, it's all automated movement. So the gimbals do all the moving of all the different parts and they register the position, I guess, between the two components and you just sit back and do what the software tells you. It tells you to move the tracking head into various different positions and locations and tells you when you're perfectly aligned. And then you just click next and it undertakes the calibration process for you. It's a pretty cool thing to see actually, this kind of tracking heads turning around and looking at all different angles and the, uh, the pole is moving on its own as well. This is a process that would have previously had to have been done manually with most 3D scanners. You have to stand there and turn the tracking pole uh, yourself. So it's nice that this is all automated. You can then change over to the handheld element of the scanner and that does a similar process. It registers and calibrates itself in relation to that board but then also in relation to the tracking head which is uh, across the other side of the room and monitoring 
the correlation between all three elements. So this is what I'm scanning first of all. You can see it's got quite a complex geometry to it and a range of different surfaces. We've got some dark and some light, so this will test the process well. So we'll start out by creating a new scan. And we've got various different settings here. We've got target point distance, which is the primary level of detail that we're going to capture with the scan. We've also got a frame rate indicator here, and that tells you the rate at which the data is going to be captured during the scan. This is going to improve if you've got a better performing computer, but it can also be tweaked by enabling a couple of the additional settings in the menu, such as allowing GPU or CPU processing or a combination of the two. We've got various different scanning modes and we're just going to use track scan for now. We've got some camera settings which we can adjust here and we can also adjust on the back of the scanner as we go. And then we've got a field of view which tells us that the handheld element is within the field of view for the tracking head. If all of that's good to go, we can start scanning. So we've got a play button on the back of the scanner. We just press play and we're ready to go. You can see that starts capturing the data as we move around the part. And we've got this indication level as we go. So green means that the scanner's captured enough data from that geometry. Red or orange means that it hasn't got quite enough yet. So we need to go over that area a little bit more. So we keep working around the part until we've got a nice level of green all around the geometry. And it's all well captured. And you can see we're using this cross laser mode at the moment, which gives us a really accurate and fast reading and representation of the surface. So once we've done the first bit of scan we can take a look at the part and see what's going on and um, see what we've captured. That's what we're looking like in the first stage. So we're just capturing the point clouds at the moment. We haven't yet turned this into a mesh so we've just basically got a huge collection of dots. As we then move through into the editing stage, we've got various different tools that we can use. This is a plane cut here, so we can chop away the masking tape and the table that I've used just to elevate the part slightly. We've then got this isolation mode, which is really great at capturing all the little bits of noise that we get in the scan surrounding the part. And we can select the level of isolation and then delete those really nice and quickly. Great feature of this software, this, um, that really speeds up the cleanup of the mesh before we move forwards. We've also got overlap detection so we can get rid of any double scanned areas. Following on from that we then turn this into a mesh and we can select the quality level that we do that to and you can see that immediately gets us a really clean looking part and we're starting to get to something much more usable now. You can see there are still a few holes in the surface there but we've also got a tool that really quickly and easily sorts that out. So we'll select the hole fill tool and we've got two different modes here. We can either fill those in a planar or a curved method. So that will either fill them in a, a dead flat fill or it will kind of look at the geometry and fill those in um, to match what's already there. So we're going to do all the curved ones first and just fill in these little bits that we missed within the scan around some of the holes and the fins on the supercharger. And you can see that once those are filled in we get a really nice solid complete mesh and um, that's just corrected all those little bits that we've missed in there. So it's looking really nice now. You could do a good scan around the part and see, uh, see that everything's looking correct. And at this stage we can drop back and continue scanning if we need to. Now you'll notice there's some fairly large gaps on the bottom edge of this component which we couldn't reach due to the angle that it was sat. So now what we're going to do is turn the part over and we're going to do a second scan from the other side and then we can merge the two of those together in the software so we've got complete capture of every angle from this part. So I set up a second scan and then scan the other side of the supercharger. As long as we've got plenty of overlap between the two, we can create a really good alignment between the two scans. One of the really nice features of this scanner is the fact that the frame that surrounds the scanning head is actually a single piece carbon fibre moulding. Now that makes this really dimensionally accurate so it means that you can maintain its tracking position really well and reliably but it also makes it really lightweight so although this looks like quite a bulky thing to be holding whilst you're scanning um, it's incredibly lightweight and that makes it really nice and easy. So once I've finished getting a scan of the second side, I do the same cleanup process again, just get rid of those little bits of noise, and then we can merge the two parts together. 
So there's a look at the second side of the scan after we've undergone the same kind of cleanup and hole filling process, certainly for the majority of parts that we're going to use. Then we can use this merge function. So we select the two separate scans and you can see that one here is yellow and one is purple. And the software is going to automatically look for common features between the two of those and create an alignment between the two. You just click that button at the top there and it automatically puts the two together. We can then blend these into one single mesh together and undertake all of the same kind of hole filling and cleanup functions that we've got for the individual scans. And this is what the part looks like once we've done that. So you can see we've got a complete scan now of all the faces of the supercharger and we've got our complete 3D mesh model. So this can now be exported and used in external software. Using the exact same process, I've also scanned the inlet manifold that I'm going to use for this engine, and here's a quick look at how that mesh comes out straight off the scanner post cleanup using all the same tools that we've just done on the supercharger. So what can we actually do with these files? Well, let's chuck them into a CAD package alongside the engine, and we'll see what we can actually now use this information for in a real life scenario. So we'll jump into Fusion, and this is the model of the engine as we've currently got it designed. So I can get rid of the existing inlet manifold setup and then insert the 3D scan for the new inlet manifold. We can get that placed into position, make sure that all the bolt holes line up and that the faces are correctly mated to make sure that this is properly positioned. This is also a good opportunity to check for any clearances with the uh, proposed new exhaust manifold that we're going to be using. Next up, I can bring in the supercharger scan and make sure that that's correctly placed for the pulley to mount onto the crank later on, and then get that in the correct place to avoid the exhaust manifold as well. Once the two parts are properly placed, I can begin designing the plates that are gonna connect the two of these for the intake transfer from the supercharger to the inlet manifold. So I can use the geometry from the scan to design the size and position of those plates for the mounting holes and the intake sections as well. So we get a plate designed for each of the mating faces and then I can loft a tube that transfers between the two. We can even create the hose that's going to just allow a little bit of flexibility between those and a bit of movement if needed. So there's a little look at the finished design. You can see that those scans imported into the 3D models allowed me to place those work out exactly where they're going to go to fit correctly with everything else that's going on and then it's allowed me to design the final component that connects the two of those together so really great illustration of what we can use 3d scan data for in a real life design scenario and with the accuracy that comes from that 3d scan this makes this really quick and easy process Scanning without markers is a massive efficiency increase. Normally with a 3D scanner you would need to have at least four markers within the field of view of the scanner at all times. So on a component like this we'd have to put 20, 30, maybe even more um, markers all over it. That interferes with the geometry of the part. It creates um, a lot more work placing them and it's generally it kind of slows you down. So being able to eradicate that step from the 3D scanning process is really good indeed. So there are actually a couple of other scanning modes that allow even further versatility when scanning parts. This I've done with a fixed part, but we can actually move the part around as well as the handheld scanner, and we use the tracker to locate that. So where I've done this in two operations and then merged them together, if we put um, around four or five markers on the part, we could have actually turned that over. The scanning head will register the rotation of the part, and then we can carry on using the handheld element um, to do that. We can also put this on a turntable and have it turning around constantly whilst we scan it so we can capture all the geometry in one go. So there are other scanning modes within this software, within this product that um, further increase that versatility and make it uh, really good, less cleanup work all in one operation. So it's a really great bit of kit all around.
The Riverpoint Track It 3D Scanner is now launching on Kickstarter, and I'll put the link to that in the description below this video so you can check it out if you're interested. I think you will find that given the technology that is included within this scanner, the price point is incredibly competitive with other ones on the market. And as you've seen, it's really versatile with all different surfaces, different scanning modes, and it's a really great bit of kit. It's certainly a massive improvement to anything that I've used before. So, hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Make sure you check out the Revopoint 3D scanner if you're interested, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.